So even though I've got power to the car and there's good power to the starter, ECU is still not turning on, which doesn't make any sense to me because there's power going to the ECU. I checked it. So I don't know. It's really frustrating. From the brake. I don't think it's your transmission malfunction. Unless somehow that would stop the ECU from turning on, but I just don't, I don't get it. So, pick this up today. This is the positive terminal in the engine bay that I fried out, I think. We're gonna replace the original, which is really nasty. And uh, hopefully this uh, lets our ECU turn on. I don't even know at this point, but I know the original part was nasty. So we're gonna fix that. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. Oh, I just realized something. On the back side of the terminal, there's a back component to that. I don't know if there's something in there that I shorted. Oh, there's another wire. So here we've got the new unit and the old unit. See, I mean, that doesn't look as bad, but when you turn it over, it shows some corrosion, but there's gotta be some kind of a fuse component to this that I destroyed. So I'm gonna swap those out, put it all back together, and We'll see if it runs. Uh, I should stop saying that. We'll just put it all back together and see. Okay, so that's all done. I'm gonna reconnect the battery and hope for the best. It is time. Time to hold my breath. Cause, moment of truth. I'm gonna plug in the key. Fuel pump's still going. Let's try starting. Wow, we're back there. Uh, son of a motherless. <sighs> so, while you watch a lovely gentleman named Russ try and diagnose my ECU, let me get you caught up. I was thinking I fried my ECU. I asked him to replace my ECU. When we plugged it in, we had the same issue. He spent about two hours troubleshooting the car with me only for me to realize that when I had repaired the upper grounding strap on the engine, a ground cable for the ECU fell out. So I replaced the ground cable and the car fired right up, thus ending the pointless saga of my not so dead ECU. Oh, you know what? What? I'm an idiot. Oh my god, it's so obvious. There is a ground line right here, big one, that came off when I replaced this ground cable. It's completely disconnected. Right this there. This one here? Yeah. Bet you anything you rec reconnect that, we'll have a... Where? Right, right here. I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry, man. EC is probably gonna wake up now. Let probably. Me, let me <laughs> properly reconnect that, though. I don't want to start it like that. Uh, it's no, 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 just, just, you know what? Just hold it there, I'm gonna try to communicate with it. Okay, if I get electrocuted. No, no, you won't. Fuel pump stopped, it's working. Oh my god. I got a limp mode, but it's running. Wonder why it's in limp mode. Missing? Yeah. Is it timing? It's firing. No, it could be oil. Barely. There's smoke coming up, too. I hear music. Yeah, smell music, too. <laughs> Still smoking like a. Idiot mistake number 12. I took the fuse out for Valvetronic because I was like, I don't want to fry anything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not saying she fixed it. it. Certainly helps. Oh, come on. One step forward. Still smoking. I figure out what that is, but it runs while it's generating a tremendous amount of smoke. <laughs> oh man! So let's see what's smoking. Oh, it smells crispy, crispy cream, crispy crab. It's not just puking oil out the back or something. Could just be more of that oil that was on the exhaust. I don't see fresh oil leaking out the valve cover gasket. But she's running as good as she ever has. Let's get some brake clean on that. That smells lovely. 
So there comes a time in everyone's life when you try to solve a problem by adding go fast parts. No, but really. So here's the situation. The crankcase breather still has some issues. And my guess is in the bottom of this manifold where all the hoses go in, there's a bunch of oil and crap and everything that's, that's in there. At least that's my hope. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull off that manifold, put on that manifold and, and see kind of where we're standing because I'm planning to do that anyways because that'll gain me some power when I get it tuned. It's been off the road for a month. Aside from the CCV issue and then me forgetting the grounding strap like a complete and total novice, it could have been on the road within a few days. Um, rear brakes notwithstanding, that's, that's fixed now. Oh, new issue. I somehow messed up the sunroof. So it's really hard to see, but it's like tilted. Not, not like it should be this way, but like horizontally. So I got to fix that now or just duct tape it. I'm not, I'm not going to duct, duct tape my roof. That would be insane. I could just wrap over it, but then I need to buy wrap. I'm getting a little distracted. Off to the manifold. So in the next episode, I removed the factory intake manifold and replaced it with the three-stage intake manifold off the 330i. Coupled with the right tune and some downpipes, this should get me close to 270 horsepower at the crank. I'm not really that concerned about hitting a magic number or anything, I just want the car to be a little more responsive than the stock 328 would be. Now I've got a wicked deal on this, I'll go over it in the next episode as well as show you the install. Thankfully at this point the engine is running again and we finally diagnosed the ECU issue as simply a missing ground strap. If you ever have an issue where your car turns on and something isn't quite responding, double check that all your ground wires are properly in place. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.